versus mouse, Bruh. what's the difference? Other than the fact that one is a snitch and the other one is used for gaming, there are many other differences. Rats are thicker and they have more meat, so they could easily feed one medium-sized child in case of an emergency. Rats have smaller ears and thick, hairless tails. Think ratatouille. Bro, my favorite scene in ratatouille is when he's cooking and falls into the soup and the French people eat the soup and don't even notice the difference. Mice, however, are much smaller and therefore faster, so they're harder to catch. Mice have bigger ears and slightly hairy tails. Think Jerry from Jerry Seinfeld. His ears are huge and his tail is also slightly hairy. That's not the tail, bro. If you can convince these troublesome rodents to get an x-ray, you'll find that they have very similar bone structure. Mice have smaller features and rats, being bigger, have much bigger heads and feet. You know what they say about mice with big feet, don't you? It's trademark. <laughs> Male and female rats should be kept in pairs as they are social animals. Even female mice should be kept in pairs. But male mice should be kept alone as they are more likely to fight with even their own family members. This is because they're territorial and more aggressive. But if the others aren't kept in pairs, they will get very lonely. In the wild, if these two do a meetup and there's plenty of food to go around, they will both be chill. But the second the food runs out, the rats, being bigger, will start bashing the smaller mouse's head against the ground like a peanut and slurp the mouse's juicy insides. As pets, rats tend to be more affectionate and loving and mice tend to be more curious and independent. It's like how the saying goes, if it's thick and it's fat, then it is a rat. If it likes to browse, then it is a mouse. Like rats will cuddle, play and be generally chill. Mice, on the other hand, will try to get away and do some crime. Mice don't like to play, but rather do things on their own. Let's talk about their smell. At the end of the day, they're filthy rodents, so they will definitely smell. But mice tend to smell more than rats. So before you get the pet, get some mouse deodorant. Mice live for about two years and rats for about three. But if we were to look at their poop, rats still come out on top. But don't be confused, the poop still comes out on bottom. Mouse poop is smaller, but it's more spread out as they are very curious creatures. Rat droppings are bigger and they're curved, and it's centralized in a smaller area, so it's easier to clean up. And since mouse poop is smaller, it's easier to cook, and rat poop is harder to cook, and it's really chewy. Rats can also be trained like dogs. They can be trained to roll over, twerk, and even sniff out land mines. Seriously, in Tanzania, they use Gambian pouched rats to sniff landmines and, you know, tuberculosis. They literally took these cheese munchers, which once stuffed their mouth with so much food that they could barely fit inside their own burrows, and taught them to be contributing members of society. Oh yeah, and rats and mice don't actually like cheese. It's a myth as it was the easiest food for them to access in the old days. So rats are smarter, thicker, and in case of an emergency, have more meat. So rats win, right? What about the fact that rats were also the ones responsible for the spread of the bubonic plague. This may seem like a con, but it's actually still a pro. Think about it. Neighbor being loud? Send a rat with bubonic plague to their house. Want a raise at work? Threaten your boss with a rat with bubonic plague at rat point until he fulfills your demands. Drive through get your order wrong? Send a bubonic rat to the corporate office for underpaying the employees. So basically, mice being smaller are perfect to be stepped on and killed. And rats, on the other hand, being thicker are perfect to cuddle with even if it has the bubonic plague. 